Je voulais juste dire d'abord que je viens d'entendre qu'on a euh, trouvé euh, un, des, un des individus qu'on avait perdu, les premiers répondants à Charlevoix. Euh, évidemment, toutes nos pensées sont avec euh, les familles, avec la communauté. Nos premiers répondants sont, répondants sont toujours là euh, pour, être, euh, pour nous aider dans des situations d'urgence. Et c'est à briser le cœur qu'on euh, qu en a perdu comme ça. Merci. Uh, so the Prime Minister talking today about needing to get CSIS to elevate information about threats against MPs. Why do you think that this wasn't elevated in the first place? Well, the first thing I want to do is reiterate that uh, we take any uh, threats around foreign interference very seriously, which is why uh, as soon as I became aware uh, of this specific threat uh, in relationship to Mr. Chong, uh, that we reached out to him when was that? Uh, Monday. To be clear, as the Prime Minister said, he and I found out on Monday. Uh, we took decisive action. Uh, I reached out to him, uh, had a conversation with him. It was uh, very cordial and supportive. Um, we offered him a briefing. Uh, we made sure that that briefing happened yesterday, and we offered continuing support uh, to him. Beyond that, internally, as you heard the Prime Minister say, we're taking additional steps to instruct uh, the intelligence and security agencies within uh, my portfolio to ensure that there is uh, both timely and accurate uh, reporting to uh, the government around any threats involving parliamentarians. And this is part of a suite of measures uh, that we have put in place to combat foreign interference. Would the government then also promise to make sure that the MPs themselves are made aware of that? Uh, without question, we need to work very closely with parliamentarians given the complexities around foreign interference. Uh, and this means making sure that um, we offer them support, that if they have questions about how it is, uh, that they, you know, may be encountering foreign interference, that we can help to mitigate those concerns. So You're asking CSIS and others to make sure the government is aware of these threats. I'm asking if you are committing to make sure that the MPs involved in those threats are made aware of those threats. Yes. Uh, and I also think it's important to recognize, as this is an important detail, that the universe of intelligence uh, is vast and that there are distinctions between what is actionable intelligence and what is not actionable intelligence. In this specific regard, um, we count on our intelligence experts at CSIS and in other agencies and departments to give timely, concrete advice about what needs to be actioned vis-a-vis -vis parliamentarians. And with the additional instructions that have been uh, put to them uh, this week, that will be our expectations going forward, as well as timely updates to parliamentarians where it is actionable. Are there any other MPs who should be informed that there were threats? I mean, there's got to be some that are thinking that they, uh, that they want to know. Well, one of the reasons why we are taking the step concretely to provide those instructions is to be sure that we provide support to any parliamentarians who uh, may uh, be targeted uh, by foreign interference. Do you think CSIS should have informed the government about Tom and we shouldn't have learned about it on Monday in this paper? Well, look, I want to be clear that uh, I have um, I've been direct in communications with the director of CSIS that our expectation is, is that where there is actionable intelligence with regards to foreign interference, or any other threat with regards to Canada's national security, that that advice is provided in a timely and concrete way. Um, this uh, particular threat involving Mr. Chong, I think, is a stark reminder about how we have to be vigilant uh, in constantly modernizing our tools. I would say, as you know, uh, we're in the throes of doing a public consultation to create a new, a new registry in, in regarding foreign influence. Um, we're having good constructive conversations about that. But even before we get to that, uh, we've given CSIS new powers in 2019 through Bill C-59. Uh, we've cracked down on foreign interfering, which could be used to meddle with elections domestically here in Canada through Bill C-76. And in Budget 2023, uh, we've allocated an additional $49 million to the RCMP to make sure that we're supporting not only parliamentarians but all Canadians but who may be targeted failure? who may be targeted by foreign interference. Is this an intelligence failure by CSIS, do you think? Like should they have warned you? It is it is absolutely imperative that the government get timely, concrete advice on any threats to parliamentarians where they have been targeted by foreign interference. And that is going to be obviously an ongoing commitment. We'll do that work with parliamentarians. But you didn't get that in this case, so is that a failure? I have been absolutely clear, and the Prime Minister has been clear, that our expectation is that we get timely, concrete advice uh, from CSIS and intelligence agencies when parliamentarians are involved. Can you give us the rationale that CSIS gave to you as to why they didn't have to pass that information on Mr. Trump or to the government? 
Well, look, I don't want to speak uh, on behalf of Mr. Chong and the meeting uh, that he had yesterday. I know there's been some public reporting about that. Um, but look, the, the questions that are being posed about how it is that we address foreign interference are important. And there are a lot of different dimensions to this dialogue. Um, one is obviously to uh, make it our paramount uh, goal to support the people that work in this place in public life uh, because they are targets of foreign interference. And this is not a new issue. This is an issue that has been going on for months and years, including going back to the last Conservative government when they had an opportunity to introduce the new powers and transparency mechanisms, uh, but they didn't do that. Our Liberal government has done that. We also need to have regard to the Security of Information Act. And look, you ask questions every day, and I want to answer them. But both me and other members of the government, including the Prime Minister, have legal obligations under the law when it comes to what we can and what we cannot share as it relates to classified information in the national security domain. And as a sophisticated democracy that believes in protecting our democratic institutions, we have to abide by those obligations. So that is another important element. My commitment is that we will continue to do this work in conjunction with all parliamentarians so that they are safe and secure in doing their work on behalf of their constituency. We'll have more to say. We'll have more to say later on. Yeah, Liberals obviously meeting for the first time in person in a number of years. So uh, some suggesting the party needs a bit more energy. Is this uh, going to help? I think you're going to see a very energetic convention. <laughs> what uh, What are you hoping this will do for the party? I mean, eight years into government, you, uh, is Conven it time for a reset? Conventions are always uh, important signposts, and uh, they're coming as they do. You know, every couple of years, it's important to take stock. It's important to renew uh, acquaintances with uh, with new and old Liberals from across the country. Uh, and I think you always find that every convention yields uh, uh, a, a number of, you know, sort of important subjects, important topics that get raised, and it's, uh, it's all good. There's a couple of resolutions that, that are going to be debated that seem to harken back all the way to 2015, the um, election reform and also balancing the budget. Are mm -hmm. either of those things something that you think should be agenda for the Liberals next time? I think it's important to talk. Uh, I think it's important to debate, to discuss. I think it's important that, that all that happens uh, uh, transparently and in the open. And I think it's important that the government be accountable for its actions to uh, the people who support our party. So uh, all of that's good. I've seen uh, hundreds if not thousands of re resolutions uh, in my lifetime, many of them important. Uh, many of them have led to government policy. Um, and uh, it's always important that the government afford those uh, things the, the attention they deserve. Thank you. Thank you. It's good for the of the party to have the chance to vote on that and also to have a discussion, a debate sur les questions là, mais c'est pas pour moi euh, de, à, de dire mon position parce que c'est l'idée de congrès et c'est pour les, les membres d'avoir un débat et de discuter et de, beaucoup de titres d'enjeux. Il y a aussi une résolution pour euh, présenter un retour à l'équilibre budgétaire. Euh, en ce moment, le, votre gouvernement euh, mise plus sur le, le ratio dette pib Donc, euh, d'avoir cette discussion-là, est-ce que vous êtes euh, ouvert à la part? Euh, je suis ouvert tout le temps de n'importe quel type d'idée, euh, mais ce n'est pas euh, le, 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 ma euh, responsabilité maintenant de, de prendre une position euh, avec les, euh, les, 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 les résolutions de parti. C'est le temps pour les membres de parti de débattre ça et après ça, on peut discu discuter ça. Merci. Okay, merci. merci. This is the first convention in five years. Uh, I know, at least from my own uh, delegates from California, they're really excited. Well, I've never attended a convention. COVID has separated us for a long time. So I, I'm looking forward to the buzz and the energy that I think everyone's going to need. This is like, uh, I just said earlier, this is like our charging station uh, where people will be re-energized, uh, reconnect, and uh, get excited about the future. I have no idea. I heard somebody mention uh, this uh, initiative, but I don't really know much about it. And there's a resolution uh, that's coming towards to the table that the party should campaign on balancing the budget in the next election, and they note specifically that the Conservatives 
will run on that? Is that something you think the party should vote favor of? Uh, I love the type of healthy debates that go on at these conventions. I look forward to this discussion, and I look forward to voting on this and many other resolutions. Thank you. Hillary Clinton in the U.S. election, your worst fear about what's going to happen to the Liberal Party? Uh, the Liberal Party over the last seven years has been uh, providing strong, reliable government for Canadians and I'm looking forward to talking with Canadians whenever the next election is about not only what we've done but what our future plans are. Thank you. Thank you very much. You know, conventions are always fun. And just being able to see volunteers from across the country, like it's a good, yeah, it's a good kick in the, that kick maybe <laughs> a shot in the arm. <laughs> okay, we'll <laughs> There's a, one of the resolutions that's being called for is uh, for the party to run on a campaign platform to balance the budget. Is that something that you think the party needs to revisit? Oh, well, I guess, you know, if, if it's going to the floor, it's something that the party's looking at. Uh, or certainly our grassroots are, so I'll keep an eye on that one. Any, uh, any uh, knowledge of this May Day movement and the suggestion that the party's lost touch with its youth? Oh, I don't know. I, I, you know that, I, that I'm actually not familiar with. i got to switch gears and get into party mode right now and governing mode. Fair, thank but you. anyway. You can talk to... Well, it's an important time. Gather everyone here and uh, talk about policy, talk about... Uh, uh, talk about strategy, it'll be a fun time. There's a resolution to uh, ensure that the party will balance budgets. Is that something you'd support? I'm not going to say how I'm going to vote one way or another. Let me listen to the debates and, and we'll go from there. Is there any policy resolutions that you're particularly into or that, you, that you're interested in or that you like or support? There are a number of different areas. I always say like justice uh, policy as well as innovation policy. C'est une question philosophique. Euh, je suis progressiste euh, et le Parti libéral est euh, je crois, idéal pour moi et mes, euh, mes idées. Mais on va, je crois qu'on va dans la bonne direction. Um, again, today is uh, today's red, uh, uh, red Dress Day. It's an important day to remember uh, missing and murdered Indigenous women and girls. Uh, we have, as a government, acknowledged the series of that, and, and we are working towards implementing uh, the, the recommendations of the MMIWG report. And I think we're, we're, we're moving in the right direction. We know it's serious. Uh, we'll let the parliamentary debate happen. But is it an, an emer a national emergency? Look, uh, we have recognized how serious this is, and we have acted, we have acted on it. We'll let the parliamentary debate happen. Uh, what do I think about it? I think it's going to be. I think it's going to be great seeing people from all across Canada. It's been virtual for a couple of years, so looking forward to having everybody face to face from across the country. Does the Does the party need at, at this moment uh, revitalization or re-energization? Like, how would you describe like the, the the vibe in the Liberal Party right now? I think the vibe is that we're excited. I mean, I think that we're faced with. Uh, Many new adversaries, including the Chinese government, including the Russian government, who are faced with economic issues that need, that need real attention. And I think people are energized to take them on. I certainly am. Any specific resolutions that you're looking to for the upcoming convention? I think, to be honest, I've always felt that the resolutions are really up to the grassroots of the party and that MPs should stay out of them as much as possible. We get enough of a chance to influence policy. It's good that the grassroots members get that chance. What is this, this May Day movement organization that's come up saying there's, the, there's a disconnect between especially younger liberals, under 35 liberals, and, and the party organization, and, and they feel uh, excluded or not listened to, and that needs to be revitalized, that aspect of it. What do you think of that? I think when I was a young liberal, I probably felt that way too. I mean, but I think generally, when I look at the young people in my riding, they're very much attached to what we're doing. And I think in general, everybody wants to be empowered. And I don't see that as a problem. I think that every group needs to feel that they're part of things. And, you know, I, 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 wouldn't, I wouldn't use the word that they're left out. I think young liberals have tons of voice in our party. But I think they have to, you know, be made to feel that they're in power. Okay. Have a great day. Thank you very much. It's great. It's great to see so many liberals from across the country coming together to uh, celebrate uh, um, our achievements and to look towards the future and plan plan what's next. Um, 
does the party need re-energizing right now, or what, what's what's the? Uh, well, I think, I think um, our membership always want to come together um, to talk about the issues and to set our, our plan course forward. I think that it's only smart for a party to continue to be looking from within and deciding what's next and where to go from here. So do we need to be re-energized? I think there's always an opportunity to refocus ourselves and that's what we're doing. One of the resolutions is uh, to have the Liberals balance budgets going forward. Is that something that you would support? And do you think there's a growing divide between people who are looking for that in the party? I think that um, we, should, we always need to strive towards uh, you know being as efficient as we can when it comes to spending taxpayers' money. I think that that's incredibly important, but I think there are a lot of bad Value, value, uh, variables that go into it. I think you have to consider what our G, how our GDP is doing in terms of that budget. Um, so I think uh, we always have to be looking at a variety of things when we're talking about our budget. Another one of the resolutions would see the or would like to see the party um, fulfill its 2015 campaign promise to get rid of first past the post reform yeah. elections. Is that something that you would support? Well, um, my understanding is that the resolution is about putting together a citizens advisory committee. So it's not quite the exact same thing, but uh, close. Um, and uh, I am definitely supportive of, uh, of getting together with uh, um, Canadians and continuing to talk about the democratic process that we have and how we improve upon that. Um, personally, I uh, very much respect uh, and appreciate uh, the regional representation, so I would never support an outcome that was at the expense of that regional representation because I think it's absolutely critical. Um, but I'm always uh, interested to look to see how we can better represent Canadians as a whole. What do you think of the, the May Day movement, this, this group? people saying that the liberals are, the party's disconnected I, from you. You know what, I haven't been following it that closely, I've heard a bit about it and maybe I'll learn more at convention, but uh, at this point I really don't have a comment on that. Thank you very much. It's a, it's, a, it's a wonderful opportunity to listen, to talk to Canadians, uh, get a sense of where they're at. Uh, where their fears are, where they're, where they'd like to see the government to go, where they need help. Our job is to, where we can, help 39 million Canadians. This, these are tough times. There's a, there's a resolution on uh, that the Liberals are going to be considering calling for the budget to be balanced for a campaign in the next election on balancing the budget. Uh -huh. Do you have any thoughts on that? Is this something the party should yeah. campaign on? It's a great uh, resolution to be debated. Let's go have the debate. As Chief Genocide Cop, I'm just wondering, were you made aware of the, um, the allegations that we're seeing in the Globe and Mail that there was a memo that Michael Chong was targeted by the Chinese? The only time I ever talk about MC Cop is when we announce the review and when we're finished one. Do you think that MP should be told if there is intelligence that they or their families are being I think MPs and senators should be briefed on foreign interference as soon as possible and regularly thereafter. Just as a fellow member of Parliament, though, I mean, reflect on this a minute. If one of your colleagues, it appears, was deliberately, deliberately targeted, his family was too. Does that concern you? I, I, I can't comment on the merits of any of that. But does it concern you? I can't comment on the merits of any of that. Does it concern you that any member of Parliament might be targeted by a foreign government for their actions? I think MPs and senators should be briefed on foreign interference, something we've called for for the last several years. I think that we need to uh, make sure that every MP and senator is briefed immediately upon swearing in and regularly thereafter. That's the recommendation I made to the government, the committee's made to the government now for three consecutive years. Thank you. It's a great opportunity after uh, being away. It's a great opportunity for the Liberal family to get back together and get re-energized. Uh, Does the party need to be re-energized? Every party needs to be re-energized, and that's why we get together every couple of years. I'm looking forward to that. It's going to be a fun time. There's a resolution that's being pushed that says the party should campaign in the next election on balancing the budget. That obviously was a big deal in the 2015 election. Is it something you think should be revisited this summer? Well, it's something we've uh, always been committed to is fiscal prudency, and uh, we're competing competing with uh, our counterparts like the United States and that's why we saw a response to uh, uh, Inflation Reduction Act of the United States but we're investing in Canadians and that's what we need to do. We still have the lowest debt to GDP ratio and our uh, books would be the envy of every other G7 country. What about the resolution that's calling for a return to rethinking the voting system again like was promised in 2015? Well that's the great thing about the Liberal Party is that we can have uh, solid discussions. I'm, I'm of the view that we've had those discussions, we've seen referenda across the country and voters have rejected that and that's, I, in my mind, I think it's, uh, we should be focusing on bigger issues for the country. And what about this May Day movement which is suggesting that their party's losing touch with its leaders? Is that something that needs to happen? Um, <laughs>
Um, conventions are always good times to reflect and look back, and we need to engage with all levels of Canadians. We can't just pick and choose which um, which segments of the population. We have to engage with everyone, and if it's about looking at engaging with youth, it's a great opportunity to do so. Thank you so much. No, that's okay. You're just doing your job. Take I'm looking forward to it. I think it's going to be an interesting discussion of policy and a chance for folks to gather together in the way that they haven't for a long time. So I think it'll be an energizing experience for all of us. When is the Just Translation Bill, when will we see it? Uh, so the bill is a sustainable jobs bill. Um, it's focused on um, on ensuring that we're building a, a strong economic future for Canadians who live in all parts of this country. Um, and as I've said, we hope to be able to introduce it certainly within the coming months, certainly before the end of the year. The resolution that's going to be voted uh, this weekend for uh, for balance books for a balance budget. Uh, what do you think uh, of this uh, this resolution? Well, I look forward to the debate and the discussion. I have always uh, maintained, just as Minister Freeland does, that having strong uh, fiscal track and, and uh, demonstrating fiscal responsibility is very important. Canada has AAA credit rating, best, uh, the, the best uh, debt to GDP ratio in the G7, and I think we are demonstrating fiscal responsibility, but I'm certainly interested to hear what delegates have to say. Thank you. It's time, obviously, in five years. Do the Liberals need a bit of a reset or new energy? Well, all political parties uh, function on, the, on their own on their volunteer base and on the quality of their uh, representatives and it's a point it's also an opportunity for us to interact with, uh, with uh, people who really support us last Saturday I had 10 people out banging on doors you know like you, you, you need to show them some love and so this is a great inter opportunity to uh, interact. Do you think that the party needs to sort of Regroup after. I mean, it's been a, a bit of a rough ride this winter, and maybe over the last couple of years, there's been some issues. Does the party need a chance to regroup? Well, I think uh, every party needs to uh, renew itself, continually renew itself. Um, I don't think there's anything unique or special about this particular uh, time, but we are facing challenges. Let's face it. Uh, stuff, stuff that's coming out with respect to uh, influence operations. A serious stuff, and it, it certainly affects how we may conduct an election. I don't know how that plays through, honestly, but what about the code? There, one of the resolutions that's on the table, a little back to 2015, in calling for you to run on a platform to balance the budget. Obviously, that was an issue in the 2015 election. What do you think of that resolution? Is it time for the party to change its uh, what it campaigned on in 2015? Well, I'm, I'm a Martin liberal. <laughs> Uh, in some words, I'm asking you the question. Yeah, yes, yeah. Yeah. Um, and uh, I um, do think that uh, you need to pay for what you commit to. Um, I do get the idea of, of deficits in uh, in pandemic times and post-pandemic times, um, but uh, I take some comfort in the five-year trend in the in the budget that uh, moves us towards balance. Personally, I prefer, prefer it more quickly. Do you know anything about this May Day movement, the suggestion that the party's lost touch with its youth? Yeah, that's from Al Fox, isn't it? No. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Okay. You said that the allegations of foreign interference and that yeah, had an impact on it. Yes. <laughs> what, well, what tells you that it, it may have an impact on, on, on the party? Well, uh, Let's say that the, the government of China runs uh, intimidation uh, police shops. Uh, it runs uh, influence operations through its Confucius institutions, institutes. Um, it's the allegations uh, of. Uh, there. Um, so we would be foolish to not uh, recognize that. Um, some of us will be targeted by, uh, particularly by the uh, government of China, and that will uh, almost inevitably uh, affect how we conduct a campaign. You know, uh, how that is and how it will play through, I'm not quite sure. Do you have any concerns about this idea that MPs might not have been told about threats that were being made against them? 
this is you, you get yourself into such a murky mess when you when you uh, kind of respond to a question like that. It's impossible to. to, to uh, Would you like to be told if there was a threat against you or your family? Well, there's a hypothetical question, but uh, uh, but uh, I uh, I uh, have some confidence in in the CSIS people um, and their their knowledge base. I would like to think that. Uh, uh, whereas there are uh, a threat against me, I'd like to know about it sooner rather than later. Uh, so in general terms, that's true. Is, is the vulnerability on foreign interference from the Chinese government or is it from the public's confidence in, in, in the government to, to take those, that foreign interference seriously? Uh, I think it's primarily driven by the, the uh, Chinese government. Oh okay. no, but is the vulnerability for your party from the oh, oh, I see what you're saying. Um, um, you want to talk to him, you don't want to talk to me. <laughs> okay. um, I think we do have uh, a that the Chinese government is attempting to influence us. And uh, is that unique uh, to the Liberal Party? No. Uh, it's, it's, it's prevalent for all of us, and, um, and I think that's I think that's significant. But do you think voters are going to, I guess, punish the parties because of how it's handled? No, no, okay. I, I don't. So um, I think that uh, I think that the, the Canadian public is getting more alarmed by the way in which the Chinese government. Um, is uh, interfering in our society mm -hmm. and uh, I think they are realizing that a uh, free, open, and democratic society is vulnerable as are all of you as practicing journalists are vulnerable to um, these kinds of operations and do we have a handle on it? That's another issue. Is it yet to be seen if this, you know, public discourse that we're having is actually going to harm the public down the line, or is it too soon to determine wow. that in terms harm of... Harm the public in what way? Uh, you know, in, I guess, interference or being influenced by China in a way, um, uh, doubt in our democratic institutions, we're all, we're already being, We're already being harmed. Um, a democratic way to deal with it is to open it up and have a conversation about it so that you at least know about it. Um, what you do about it is maybe another issue, but, um, but I do think that uh, in an ironic sort of way, the Chinese government has done us all a favor uh, because they've alerted us to a ma many of their techniques of, um, of foreign, foreign interference, inter influence operations. And are you concerned about all these leaks that keep happening? Um, I would wish that we didn't have to learn about it by leaks. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much, Thank Mr. You. McKay. Okay. Appreciate Take care. Time. Okay. Thank Enjoy. I can't answer that question. I can say, though, that we've treated the ongoing tragedy with the seriousness that it deserves, including, by the way, um, launching the inquiry in 2015 and then working through an action plan and the investments that, through my department and others, have been made in um, all of the uh, uh, action items that the, the plan calls for. Of course, there's tons more to do. And personally, I think the ongoing violence that women, especially Indigenous women, face is um, is a crisis, but we have to continue to work through these things methodically and with partners at all levels of government. Do you believe it's a national emergency? Well, I don't know what the definition of, I don't know what declaring a national emergency would mean. I certainly see it as a crisis uh, and certainly um, something that is, uh, it calls on all of us to do more. Look at the intertwining of colonialism and patriarchy and the devaluation of women's bodies and in particular indigenous women's bodies in this country is nothing new and this government's taking the work that we have to do to turn that all around very seriously but it is methodical and in some spaces it's slow because it's changing the ideology of how people value women's lives in particular indigenous women's lives. Regarding the convention I'm wondering what do you make of the 
resolution that would see the party commit to balanced budget. Oh, sorry, I don't even, I, I would have to dig into that a bit more. Thank you. Madame la Ministre, Madame la Ministre, vous avez déposé des motions sur ce cas Jojo après le comité. Pourquoi on fait ça? Il y a des motions qui disent qu'ils affaiblissent la loi, on prend les versions moins contraignant. Pourquoi avoir fait ça? Mais premièrement, on peut toujours déposer des motions et des amendements euh, à ce stade, mm -hmm. mais le projet de loi n'a pas été euh, moins lourd. C'est sûr que le projet de loi, en demandant, puis encore une fois, nous avons pas été d'une manière qui était plus faible du tout. Mais pourquoi l'avoir fait pas via le, le comité? Est-ce que vous voulez faire ça par la porte dans l'arrière? Pas du tout. Encore une fois, c'est un processus qui est très typique euh, lors euh, de, de l'étude du comité, puis nous avons suivi le processus parlementaire. Il n'y a vraiment aucun, aucune raison. Qu qu'est-ce que vous avez dit? Vous parlez avec M. Robert, puis qu'est-ce que oui, j'ai eu une rencontre avec mon homologue du Québec euh, la semaine dernière et puis nous avons tout simplement parlé euh, du plan d'action et puis les investissements. Encore une fois, nos quatre piliers que nous avons parlé de, toute la question d'immigration francophone, l'importance de freiner le déclin du français et puis d'avoir des cibles euh, et puis une politique d'immigration, aussi de l'appui au continuum de l'éducation et puis euh, d'appuyer nos organisations qui font un travail exceptionnel sur le terrain. Puis aussi que le gouvernement fédéral doit jouer un rôle crucial dans le domaine des langues officielles. Le 20, le 20 qui vont aux anglophones au Québec, est-ce que c'est est, est un no-brainer, ça reste 20 Est-ce qu'il y a une possibilité qui change? Encore une fois, je pense qu'on doit vraiment 